Naz Shah is the Member of Parliament for Bradford West. She represents the Labour Party, so it should come as no surprise that she's a racist extremist. The Labour Party has become the new nasty party, hasn't it? I mean, sure, they're sticking to their age-old principle of just spending money we don't have to provide free things to as many people as possible, but as Britain's demographics have shifted over the last couple of decades, the party has begun this whole new policy of appeasement of a religious minority who have nefarious agendas. Naz Shah epitomises this transformation very well indeed. She's one of the most extreme members of Parliament that we have, and in just three years in the House, She's been temporarily suspended from her party and stirred up a number of national controversies that show just how hateful, nasty, mean-spirited and self-serving she is. Which makes sense. I mean, if anyone was going to take the Bradford West seat from George Galloway, who called the constituency his Bradford Spring after he won the by-election in 2012, it was going to be another radical. Galloway got over 18,000 people to vote for him in this largely Muslim area. This man has an interesting history when it comes to Judaism and Israel as well. So for Labour to win in the 2015 election, they had to choose someone who could play him at his own game. And Shah did exactly that. And then some. As soon as Shah was elected, she was contacted by a Christian convert from uh, Islam called Nisar Hussein. And I met him last year. His stuff was shocking. After he left Islam, his family was subject to vicious anti-Christian abuse. They were regularly threatened and intimidated, and CCTV footage shows Nisar being beaten up by a gang of Muslim men outside his own house. This resulted in Nisar and his family being escorted out of their home in the middle of the night by armed police and relocated to a new safe house. And when Nisar contacted Shah, his MP, to arrange a meeting to discuss it, it was shunned. Shah and her aide, Mohammed Shabir, who previously had worked with MP George Galloway, ignored Nisar after making empty comments and promises to the press. She said something, but then just ignored Nisar and his family. In fact, she told ITV News that support had been provided to Nisar's family, but no such support came. And in 2016, blogger Paul Staines found a Facebook post from Shah in 2014, which supported the relocation of the State of Israel to the USA. Shah also compared Israeli policies to Nazi Germany policies, and she admitted herself that her words were anti-Semitic, though no doubt only after the Labour Party put the boot in and told her to be less obvious about it. On the 26th of April 2016, Shah stepped down as the private secretary to Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell. The day after, she was suspended from the Labour Party. And surely that would have been that, but no. Shah only resigned from her job in the Labour Party. She didn't resign from her position as Member of Parliament for Bradford West, presumably because she knew very well that the Labour Party would just take her back. And they did. She was reinstated on the 5th of July after a meeting with the party's executive committee. She was given just a slap on the wrist and once again given free reign to be the nasty piece of work that she is. And in 2017, after being re-elected, she liked and retweeted a post from an Owen Jones parody account. The tweet called on the abused girls in Rotherham to shut their mouths for the sake of diversity. She told the press that it was an accident, but we all know that's a lie. I mean, this is no slip of the finger. She chose to like the tweet and then chose to click an entirely separate button that retweeted the tweet. This is who she is and this is what she thinks. And you'd think she'd have learned her lesson by then, but no. After hearing that the political extremist Winnie Mandela had died, remember, this is a woman who endorsed burning alleged police informers alive with tires round their bodies in a practice known as necklacing. She retweeted a post that joked about this gruesome form of murder. And she wasn't the only one to praise Winnie Mandela, despite her involvement in multiple murders. Professional victim Afua Hirsch lauded Mandela, claiming if she'd been white, there would be no debate about her being a hero. But that's rubbish. If she were white, the press would be reporting on the death of a terrorist, political extremist and a murderer. Shah is the nasty face of anti-English politics in Britain. She isn't unique, though. She's just not particularly good at hiding it. And with all these nasty comments, serious political controversies and her belittling of the victims of Muslim rape gangs in Rotherham, and her joking about the burning of people alive using rubber tyres, this should surely be enough for this horrible woman to resign, or at least for the Labour Party to permanently suspend her and call for her resignation as a Member of Parliament. But with Corbyn's track record and his appeasement of a violent religious minority, I think that Naz Shah has a bright future in the new nasty party. Shah isn't going away, but she does need to be exposed. It's time that this woman faced real political pressure to step down, apologise to the victims she mocked, and face the full weight of the racial and religious hatred legislation that her party so fervently endorses. Watch me and the rest of the Rebel team on our brand new app. Download it now from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store.